welcome to Translogic. I'm Jonathan Buckley. Every year CES gets bigger and better and this year's no exception. So let's get amongst it. Common that people come to CES and make a splash, but you guys have really made a splash. As we approach your booth today, you see behind us this car, the FF01, is getting probably more attention in this particular part of the hall than any other thing. Underlying in this vehicle is technology that will be available and will be part of uh, what we're doing for production. But on top of that, rather than showing what we're, we're doing, doing in the future, we wanted to show something that symbolises what we are as a company. So Faraday Future, I, would you consider yourself more a tech company or an automotive company? Oh, uh, neither. We are uh, a tech company that bridges the, 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 the gap between where automotive are and what automotive means to people today and consumer electronics. The FF01, the specs so far, I mean, obviously this isn't a drivable car right now. It's a concept of what you can do. Yep. But the numbers that you've quoted so far are pretty impressive. I mean, 1,000 horsepower, yep. 0 to 60 time of sub 3 seconds, 200 mile an hour top speed. I mean, this is all pretty pretty lofty claims. Is that something that you believe is achievable? Oh, it's, it's absolutely achievable. The, the motors that we could put in this, we're already developing these motors. We know how powerful, we know yep. what they'll do. So we know what would happen if we took not just one of them. What if we put all four of them in the car? What if we take our most powerful back? Battery pack, our, our stiffest, strongest structure, our great best suspension systems that we're already working on. This is what you and get. And this is what you get. Fantastically exciting. Now that platform that you mentioned is switchable as well. Now is this a platform that you will use for, I guess, say more reasonable cars or more practical cars? In yes, future? exactly. The, 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 the underpinnings of what would be in this car are exactly the same as we're planning to use for our production cars. The way we design the battery pack is in a modular way. It's almost in slices, so yeah. on a big pack you put a, put a lot of slices in. If you want a smaller pack or a smaller car, you take some slices, slices out. out. You've got four motors, yeah. 1,000 horsepower. Or mo not many cars have 1,000 horsepower, but yeah. a lot of cars have 250 horsepower. Now that happens to just be a quarter of what we've got here, so yeah. one motor gives us 250 horsepower, which is exactly what we might want in a smaller everyday car for a family. So I guess the question is, when it's time to unveil the, the first uh, rolling sassy, the first vehicle that we can drive from Faraday Future, what's that going to look like? Well, the first product is aimed at being a premium, prime product, top-end, large vehicle, and that's the type of thing it's going to be. If I use a word like SUV or sedan or minivan, you've immediately got a mental picture in your mind as to what that means. None of those would give you the image or the idea of the type of vehicle we're actually going to produce because oh, we're doing you can't something, just... <laughs> something so different yeah. that it's not describable by modern terms. Oh man, you're just dangling that lollipop right in front of us, <laughs> are you? What do you say when people come to you and say, oh, Faraday Future is going to be the Tesla killer? No, I want people to say Tesla and Faraday are going to be the gasoline car killers. Ah, very nice, I like it. Quite a name, isn't it? The BMW iVision Future, Future Interact. Inter <laughs> interaction. So the basic idea of uh, this particular show car is to combine pure driving, manual driving, with highly automated driving. We differ between three different driving modes. Pure drive, where I drive manually. We have the assisted uh, drive mode and the highly automated driving mode. And this impacts the amount of information which is visible uh, on the displays. What do you say we go hop in the, in the i8 or the iVision Future Experience whatever, Interactive, whatever it is, <laughs> and you can show us some of the features? Yeah, of course. Okay. <laughs> we were lucky enough to get the i8 just prior to launch, and that still, I think, is one of the nicest interiors of ever, any BMW I've ever been in. I thought it was going to be a hard one to top, but you guys have managed to do that with this one. So simple, you've managed to remove nearly every button and all we've got is this beautiful screen along the top of the, get the dash and some sensors down here. Is that how we control everything now? Exactly. There are several ways. We as BMW strongly believe in multimodal interaction. So we support uh, natural language uh, recognition. Okay. Also, um, we have here integrated into our surfaces interactive uh, areas. So, for example, here in the, the armrest, you can also select similar to the air touch gestures elements on your display. I like the way that you've managed to combine not only kind of air touch capabilities mm -hmm. and gesture control with a touch control because I feel like maybe a lot of people might not necessarily want to go with the whole wavy thing straight yeah, off the bat. That's exactly the point. We want to give 
the user the, the, the chance to choose which channel he uh, can interact or wants to interact with the system. So what would we control up here? We've got obviously like music, um, maps. It, it's um, a personalized menu, so yep. based on what the user needs in certain situation, we can decide what information we are uh, going to show him. Would you be able to show us how to switch between functions? So we adapt our user phase when we switch from highly automated to uh, viewer driving mode. Yep. You switch to driving mode. Oh wow, and the steering wheel comes out And the you. steering wheel comes out, yep. and this blue illumination of the um, steering wheel indicates that you have to take over now the driving task. If you switch back to the highly automated driving uh, mode to sit like this and uh, chat with you. So we can have a chat while we're cruising yeah, exactly, in traffic uh, on the 405. <laughs> We've got all of our multimedia up here now. Exactly, video call. What's the likelihood that we will see this vision car hit the streets? Uh, that's hard to say. So it's uh, one version of the future. There are, of course, several versions of the future. Okay. So I, we cannot comment on it. All right. VW has unveiled a car this year that has garnered an awful lot of interest, hasn't it? We're talking about the Microbus. It's a hugely iconic car, as big as the Beetle. The one that we've got on stage, nicknamed Buddy for CES. It has an electric powertrain. Yes, it's fully electric, zero emission, uh, four wheels drive. Uh, it has a range of 233 miles, yep. and it could be charged within half an hour to 80% of the capacity. Okay, so it is good for road trips, because that's the first thing when you yes. think of a, a thing like the microbus. With this car, you've impl implemented a lot of new technologies. Yeah, exactly. Uh, we took the gesture control, uh, not only inside the car, but outside the car. You can open the doors with gestures, it has no door handles anymore, right. and then no more mechanical switches in the car to have a more intuitive and a more uh, future-based uh, HMI in the car. When it comes to connectivity, obviously people are now wanting to connect their things, whether it be their devices to their car, but yeah. things in your home, uh, home electronics, stuff like that. Is there some kind of uh, area where you're working on with, the, with Buddy on that? Exactly, Buddy shows the start of the smart home into the car. As an example, if you're coming home, your home already knows when you will arrive at home. Yeah. The, uh, it can be heated up and, and the lights can be on when you're at home. I know you say that this one is electric right now, but will there be an option with a gasoline engine? This is a full focus on electric car. It's optimized for electrical batteries and engines. Do we have any idea of the price of the microbus? Sorry, I cannot say today anything about that. No, uh, that's but be sure, be sure we are Volkswagen. Such a car should be affordable for yep. everybody. Well, it's great to see so many of the automakers down at CES making their presence felt. And there's a clear focus this year of interactive user interfaces, connectivity, and of course, autonomous driving functions. We can't wait to see what's on offer for next year. For TransLogic, I'm Jonathan Buckley. We'll catch you next time.